where I am speaking with the Right Reverend Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury and the head of the Global Anglican Communion. So many thanks for being with us again. So you met with the President Uhuru Kenyatta today. Could you talk to us about the nature of the talks you had? It was a private meeting, so I can't obviously give you the details, right. but it was a courtesy visit, but also we discussed, uh, I listened very carefully, I'm always conscious of my own ignorance. Um, I listened very carefully to what he said about uh, the situation in Kenya, we discussed that, and we discussed um, uh, the situation in the region, particularly the tragedy in South Sudan, to which you've already referred, but also uh, the tragedy in Somalia, uh, which of course has, has been of great cost in human terms to Kenya itself. Right. And there seems to be divided opinion over the role of the international community in, mm. uh, you know, just quelling the kind of political deadlock that we find ourselves in as Kenyans. What's your take on that? I think I go back to what I said earlier, that reconciliation is done by the parties mm -hmm. involved in the difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, you can't impose it on people, mm -hmm. but you can encourage enable and take away obstacles to it. And I think it is uh, two things, you can do two things wrong in dealing with an issue where there's a level of conflict, which at the moment, uh, uh, obviously in some countries is violent and happily here is uh, largely, with some exceptions, but largely not violent. The, either you don't get involved and people feel abandoned, mm -hmm. or you get too involved and they feel controlled. Right. And there's a middle way, which is about support and encouragement and help without, while well, saying to them, you've got to work this out yourselves. Right. It's not for foreigners. We've, we've done all that in the past. Let's not go there again. All right. And uh, let's just talk about the role of the church in the society now. And the world of today is really changing. We are seeing yes. an increase in secularization. Yes. Modernity has come with so many complexities, change Indeed. in value systems. What's the role of church in this changing society? Well, the role of the church comes down to two essential things. Mm -hmm. One, it is to worship God in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. as he's been revealed to us in Jesus Christ and testified to in the scriptures, and to, to do that with all our hearts and soul and strength and mind. Secondly is to love our neighbors, and uh, to proclaim, and part of the working out of that love mm -hmm. is to tell the good news of Jesus Christ in word and deed. Now, how that works out in practice varies from society to society. The church must be involved in its society, it must be in that sense political, but it must not be party political. Mm -hmm. And that's a really important difference. If we're part of society, we will seek a society that is virtuous, that it has values, mm -hmm. that cares for the weak and the poor, uh, that loves the stranger, that is courageous and creative, that gives people the opportunity to develop their lives, that mm -hmm. is stable and open mm -hmm. to reconciliation. All these things we want. Right. But we cannot be party political. Right. And speaking about a changing society, since the 1990s, the Anglican Communion has really struggled with controversy regarding its stand on homosexuality. Indeed. And uh, this has seen deep vi uh, divisions, both, both in the Church of England and really globally in the Anglican uh, Communion. Is this, do you find it a burden, um, you know, <laughs> trying to reconcile it within the Anglican com Communion? I find it a huge burden, mm -hmm. as do most uh, Anglicans I know. And it's worth saying that actually almost all the global churches are struggling with this issue for exactly the reason you identified, the, the rapid change in culture. Every church is caught up with that and, and has different tensions around the world. Um, it is no secret that like other churches, Anglicanism has deep divisions over this. And our challenge is to work our way forward, holding on to the truths that are given to us through Jesus and in the scriptures, and yet never sinking to the level of demonizing or hating people because they are homosexual. Mm -hmm. And uh, living with that tension is something we are struggling with. It would be idiotic to deny that. But we pray and continue in our last meeting of the global heads of churches, the primates as they're called, the archbishops of um, 
33 of the 39 provinces were there, right. uh, including the Archbishop of uh, the Anglican Church of Kenya. Mm -hmm. It was a good example. The discussion was extremely robust, but it was a discussion within the family, uh, like a family argument. Right. And it was tough, but we continued to love one another. Right, because is the end goal to have a reconciled stand on this, or how well, would Well, it would be wonderful, mm -hmm. but maybe I'm too pessimistic, um, but certainly the cultural differences are so great, and my own passionate commitment to not imposing things on other mm -hmm. people is mm -hmm. so considerable. Mm -hmm. um, Moreover, I'm, I'm not a pope. I don't have the authority to do so. I have a more like a sort of orthodox patriarchal kind of position, I think is the way it's looked at very often, is uh, that I think it is going to be difficult to come to a single view. What I do think we can do within the churches and the Anglican communion globally is to demonstrate that we can love one another and yet dis disagree very profoundly. Right. Uh, what I often call good disagreement. Mm -hmm. um, the worst of all things is just to be like the world uh, and where we disagree to hate one another. Right. That's a betrayal of, uh, a betrayal of Jesus Christ in the worst way. Mm -hmm. Because in January 2016, you actually came out to apologize to the LGBT community Indeed we did. for what you said, and I quote, for the hurt and pain that they have experienced by the Anglican communion over the years. You're exactly right. Uh, that was a unanimous decision by the primates who were present at that meeting. Mm -hmm. And actually, it echoed decisions made frequently in the past, before 2016. Mm -hmm. And uh, that we should not hate those who are homosexual, who are LGBT people. Uh, they should not be hated. Um, they are human beings. They, are, uh, they have the dignity of human beings for whom Christ died. And, and we made that statement very clearly, and it's very central to Anglican thinking. All right. And even as we head towards ending our conversation, what is the vision of the Anglican Church? I think the vision of the Anglican Church, in one sense, comes back to what is the vision of the Church. It mm -hmm. is to be a Church that grows ever closer in repairing the wounds in the body of Christ, the global Church in coming back to unity with one another as we were in the distant past. And as we move on that journey to sharing with other Christians of other churches in a profound service to humanity, mm -hmm. which is to share the gospel, to worship Christ, to love the poor, mm -hmm. uh, and to love one another. Right. And what is your message to the Kenyans who are watching you tonight? My message to the Kenyans is, first, thank you. I owe so much to this country. Secondly, we pray for you. Remember what Jesus said. He said, uh, love your neighbor, love one another, love your enemy. And if that can be done, Kenya has not many problems and will set a great example to the world. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very, very much for the for honor of being on the It was show. a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. The Right Reverend Justin Welby, who is the Archbishop of Canterbury and the head of the Global Anglican Communion, joining us tonight here on KTN Wake and Prime. We take another short break here. Don't go too far. We have news, more news coming up after the break.